like a part two to what I just did. Um, I'll put, uh, oh, well, look for part one. This is probably good to have as an independent video. I'm going to try to do the same thing. I was in Daniel, the book of Daniel in the last one. This one, um, I'm going to Revelation 13. And we're not going to be focusing on the mark of the beast. Probably every time, seems like every time someone talks about Revelation 13, they're talking about the mark of the beast. And we're not going to go there. Um, and so we're going to go to the topic I was just talking about. And that is how in the Dark Ages... The um, the rulers of the world of the world governments tried to stifle and put out the light of the true beneficial message, and they used, you know, many uh, militaristic and um, murderous ways to try to do it. Also, they perverted the word of God and hid the word of God from people as far as the holy scriptures. I mean, um, now let's go to verse two right here. So we're at. Um, Revelation 13, and we're going to verse 2. The beast which I saw, Apostle John saw, was like to a leopard. Feet were feet as a bear, and his mouth, mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat, great authority. That way we can identify it's the same beast that um, Daniel saw. Um, Daniel described the lion, bear, and leopard uh, conglomerating into one kingdom in, in Daniel chapter 7. So now we go down to verse 3. We're not going to focus on the kingdom. We're focused on what's happening here. Um, and I saw one of the heads, as it were, wounded to death, and its deadly wound was healed, and the whole world wondered after the beast. Um, and so we have, don't confuse that with people saying some guy got shot in the head, because you know how it is. It's like people want to have their worldly thing. There's, just like they thought Jesus was going to be born as a king in a palace and take care of the Jews in a worldly sense and continue the old covenant way. Well, they were wrong. He was born in a manger and he came forth with the kingdom of God and the spirit and which everyone has access to, not just, uh, you know, not just bloodlines and, and wealthy royalty, you know? So then we go to verse four and they worship the dragon. We know the dragon is that serpent of old, the devil and Satan a verse in this book that says that, who gave power to the beast. We know the beast is the global, I shouldn't say global, sorry, worldwide government on the last day. At, at, I'm not, not on the last day, I'm sorry. At the end of this age, the last time of this age, because we know Jesus comes back for a thousand years uh, and that is no longer in power. Um, so we have, Verse 4, and they worship the dragon which gave power to the beast. And it also means animal in the original text, animal beast. And I, I always liken that to an animal has no human um, capacity to love um, and to to be with God. You know, um, There's not a place in animals' hearts for God like men have to have the spirit of God dwelling in them. So it's like an animal that has no God in it, right? And they worshipped the beast, or the animal beast, saying, Who is like to the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So it's this warring thing that's dominant. We know back in the Dark Ages, this uh, the Americas weren't known yet as far as public, um, you know, the main public didn't know that. Um, so when they read it, of course, the world back then was Europe and Asia and maybe a few other areas, but it wasn't the whole world. Um, but now we know that it's the world is, is known as far as much more now than it was then. Or more continents are known. So they worship the beast saying, who's likened to the beast? Who's able to make war with him? So he has this warring ability. And we know the Catholic Church in the Dark Ages, they controlled most armies. How they wanted to, you know, who's able to make war with it? No one really, right? No one could uh, stomp it out. Maybe China could, but they weren't. Um, they weren't really mixing with China at that time, as far as I know. Maybe they had taken China over in their leadership. I heard recently from a um, from a wise. I hope he's a brother. Um, I'm sure he is actually. Um, he's striving to be. Um, he said that. 
um, he professed to me anyway, he said that the, the China the Chinese government has been overrun by the Masonic element, the Freemason, Illuminati-led people. So I, I always figured China has a big enough army and enough men to fight the whole world and probably win, you know, depending on how they do it. And at least threaten, they could start threatening countries and taking them over to the point where they could take the world over. But since they are controlled by the dragon, okay, Satan, because the other governments probably already have their influence and control over their leaders. And that's how the it says that the dra the um, the beast gave its power. Let's see, the dragon gave the power. They gave the beast its power. I think that yeah, the beast gets got its power from the dragon. The dragon, I believe, is Satan, like it says. But also, I believe the dragon has a secondary meaning and, and it has to do with China. Um, there's a lot of dragon elements in their culture and their government. So. We'll just leave it at that, and then I don't get too far into that. Um, so they worshipped the dragon, which gave power to the beast, the animal beast. And they worshipped the beast, the animal beast, saying, Who's like to the beast? Who's able to make war with him? Because it's a dominating power over the earth as far as um, worldly kingdoms and worldly governments are concerned. Um, verse 5, And there was given to him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. Blasphemies are misrepresentations of God and speaking against God, speaking things that defame God's character. And they go again, they try to, you know, misrepresent and use God's name in a false sense to get things done their way. Blasphemy, right? Um, I did look it up in the Gospels and it's, it means malicious misrepresentation. So, misrepresenting God with an intent to harm. Okay? And power was given to him. That's, I believe, the leader of the leading, the leading power, the leading consciousness of that global government. That's what I believe it is. And it could be in one man or a few men or, you know, it's at the top, right? It's basically funnels up to Satan. And Power was given to him to continue 40 and two months. That's three and a half years, as we saw in the last video. Um, times, time, times, time, and half a time. You could, could, that could be understood as two and a half, or sorry, three and a half years. 42 months equals three and a half years also. Then verse six. He opened his mouth in blasphemy and misrepresentation of deity, right? Against God to blaspheme and misrepresent his name, character, and authority. The word name means character and authority in the Greek. And his tabernacle, his tent, his, his dwelling place is the church. So to blaspheme, misrepresent his church. That sounds like the Catholic Church in the Dark Ages for sure. And of course, these days we're dealing with it too. But now it's on the truly global, or sorry, worldwide level. Um... And them that dwell in heaven. Okay, that's important because people think that means people that are dead and up are in, and are up in heaven. Now, it does, but it also means Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and we're to be in His kingdom here on earth. And so, if we're operating in His kingdom here, they'll blaspheme and misrepresent us. So, we should be expecting that they would tell us that. It's the devil doing it through us and not God. Just like they told Jesus. They said, he's casting out devils by the prince of the devils. You know, so, and Jesus said, you know, kingdom divided against itself can't stand. Also, he said that he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit hath not ever forgiveness, um, not in this age nor the age to come. But of course, as he said that, that indicates that those who do blaspheme the Holy Spirit at the last day when death and hell deliver up the dead that are in them, obviously they will be saved at that point. After this age and the next one when Jesus reigns a thousand years and then the last day comes. And if that blew by you fast, check out my other videos. The point is, um, you know, they, they misrepresented God saying that um, Jesus was casting out devils by an unholy spirit when he was doing it by the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus warned them, said, he who um, blasphemes against or maliciously misrepresents the Holy Spirit 
won't be forgiven in this age or the age to come. And that's in Luke. Uh, Luke In Luke, it describes him saying that, this age and the age to come. We need to be careful to take everything into consideration when we're doing the scripture. Because otherwise we misrepresent one part, leave another part out, and we get a false read on what it means. And you can't have an understanding that disagrees with any part of Holy Scripture. So that, therefore you need to take every part in consideration. Verse 6 says, He opened his mouth in blasphemy, malicious misrepresentation against God, to blaspheme, maliciously misrepresent his name, his character, his authority, and his tabernacle, his, his church, his body, where he dwells. And them that dwell in heaven. Now, that could also mean, we know that absent the body is present with the controller. So those who died are with Jesus and Father in heaven. We know that. And he comes, they come back with white horses with Jesus, on white horses with Jesus. So we know that. And they're blaspheming Apostle Paul, Peter, the writings in the Holy Scripture. We know they've changed parts, little parts of the Holy Scripture, mistranslated. That is blaspheming, that's maliciously misrepresenting Paul, Peter, John, and they're in heaven, you know what I mean? Literally. Um, so in the third heaven, right, where, where God is. And so verse 7, and it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Power was given him to kill all, let's see, no, to, no, no, not kill, sorry. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, nations, so families and people groups, nationalities, right? And governments, you know, nations. And the last part here says, And all that dwell on the earth shall worship him, whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Any man that has a hear, hear, let him hear. I want to go back to this verse. This is very important. Now, he's, remember, he's describing, let's check the order of this. Verse 4, um, They in the middle, they worshiped the beast, and he was like the beast who was able to make war with them. And there was given him, you know, so we know it's like a government with an army, physical battling army, right? There's also spiritual armies, but verse 5, and there was given to him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, right? So remember, we're talking about this, government entity that's blaspheming and misrepresenting God, right? And power for 42 months. We know it's the government that rules the earth and takes over the whole earth as far as governments go. And they're in power when Jesus comes back. Now, verse 6, he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. So, keeping verse 5 in mind, okay, he's blaspheming God, right? And the, the leaders of the world, the worldly leaders are blaspheming God. The church leaders, the government leaders, they believe the same thing in this false God. Okay, And they're, de they're uh, vilifying the true God and they're, um, they're uh, what, promoting and trying to get people to accept the false God as good. Okay, Verse 6, and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God, blaspheme his name, character and authority in his tabernacle. So here he's blaspheming the those who are truly in Christ, who the message, the beneficial message, the gospel comes through to those that dwell on the earth. Okay, so we see this. Um, verse 7 is given him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Now this is very important, to overcome them. Overcome the saints. That's horrible. I mean, but what I'm seeing is, He's overcome. There's so many saints that are in the earth that are overcome with deceit. They don't believe the full, unadulterated, Holy Scripture beneficial message. There's parts that have been perverted, and they're settling for the mainstream perversions that have been already established. Um, Personally, I've been trying to go to the source only and look at the, the only the source and the original text and find the differences from the original text from the translations that have been translated from the original text. And over the last 20 years, probably about 17 though that I've been doing this, I've, I've found a lot. I put them on my videos. Now, there's not a lot. They, they basically take a few little points. I should, they're not little, they're big. 
few a few short points and twist it a little to run people off from the full salvation of mankind. And of course, there's there's a movement that I found called the Last Reformation. And they are going out and they are working in the spirit, science, miracles, mostly healings and casting out devils and truly baptizing people in the water and in the spirit. And that is what we need to be focused on. And unfortunately, all the other denominations don't seem to put the focus on that as much. And they're incorporated. Now, when, a, when you get incorporated with a government license, you know, they gave Paul license to speak in their little assemblies and stuff and in the government. But it wasn't a license they had to sign where they agreed that, that the government is the creator of their church and the head of their church. Okay, this is the difference. When they they gave Paul license to speak, they were just allowing him to get up and speak with, and they were giving him, uh, they were yielding to him to speak. They were letting him speak and not interrupting him. But this license they have now, if you have a license by the state that you've signed, and it says that the government is your head, and that the, uh, you know, the government that is secular and not under Christ, and not even believing in Christ, or acknowledging him, Jesus, right? Then, and and they say that that's your creator, and you're agreeing to that by signing your name. That's how they're being. The, uh, verse se- verse seven. It was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Remember, our battle is not against flesh and blood; it's against principalities and powers. So, if that's where the battle is, and this is what's happening right now with most churches. They're giving themselves over to this, this license. They're agreeing that the governments of man that are secular, this beast-headed entity, is giving them license, and they're accepting it. And they're accepting the terms. They're professing that their creator is the government, that is the beast, or at least headed by the beast, and that they are created by that same beast. And at the same time, they're saying they're created by Christ, and he's their head. Remember, it says... Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So they're making the church unstable. They are, um, it's blasphemy. It's just, you see how this is right here, okay? So I'm telling all of you who are able to watch this video, if you are not sure that your church is not licensed by the government or not, get out until you find out it is because they're, the beast is overcoming you through that. And I'll tell you, you know, when I came out of it, God gave me much more, much more, period, and power, too, and revelation of him and direction and all that. So the point is, now is your time, and Revelation 17 and 18, in Revelation 18, 4, it says, My people, come out of her, that you be not partakers of her sin and receive of her plagues, because her plagues shall come in one day, death and mourning and famine shall be utterly burned by fire. Um, I'll go to that because I have the Bible in front of me. Usually I just say it, but 18, Revelation 18, verse 4. Okay, what do we got here? Down at the bottom. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Who has people in heaven? Jesus and Father. That's the same God, so it works. And that you are not partakers of her sins, and you not receive of her plagues. Um, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. In verse 8 it says what the plagues are. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. And in, verse, in chapter 17 it talks about the plagues. Okay, let's see, where's that again? Um, Just give me a moment here. Maybe it's over here. Oh, yeah, it's right here on the same page. Cool. So that's 18. So 17 up here. Verse 16. 17, 16 is, And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, like we were talking about earlier, these shall hate the whore. Remember, he says, come out of the whore, right? Because these ten horns will hate the whore, make her desolate and naked, shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Strong for God has put it in their hearts to fulfill His will. Remember, He uses enemies to destroy His enemies. He uses one enemy to destroy the other. Right? It's happened in the Old Testament quite a bit. Now, in sixteen, 
the ten horns that you saw on the beast. And we're talking about ten horns again in like in Daniel 7. So we're talking about the same thing here. Shall hate the whore. Make her desolate and naked. Eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So make her desolate and naked. The reason we connect the whore with overcoming is if God's telling his people to get out so that they don't partake in these sins and receive the plagues, think about it. That sounds like overcoming, right? It is, because the beast is involved. There's an overcoming. If the saints get that, they're overcome. So you got to figure, now what's the whore? It says the great city that made the merchants of the earth rich. Uh, let's see here. Here it is right here. 17. Try to see where I could. Um, okay. For the boats and stuff. We'll see. Oh, here it is. Verse 17. Okay. For in one hour, such re great riches is come to nothing, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and, er and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood far off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like this great city? They cast dust on their heads and cried, wailing, weeping. Weeping, they say, alas, that means I'm grieving. Alas, I'm grieving. That great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For one hour she's made desolate. Now we know there's not just one city doing that. Now the great city, like it's called in another verse, there's a lot of great cities. That's where all the corporations are headed. The corporations are the ones that pay the merchants. Um, merchants were made rich. Where was that part? Remember where it says that? Well, talking about all the shipmasters. There's another verse that says, the merchants were made rich by the abundance of their delicacies. And I'm trying to find that one. Here it is right here. Verse 15. We didn't read that one yet. And the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, stood far off. Now, that's the key. What's making merchants rich? What pays the merchants ultimately? It's the corporations. The corporations control the money. They're the ones that the money goes to the corporations. The corporations pays the merchants. So watch the for a for a government for a church to become licensed by the state. Like I was talking earlier, where you sign the, the government your creator, the government your head. You have to become a corporation. The actual churches that sign into that are identified and and labeled and set up as corporations. Now we have corporations that pay merchants, right? And then you got corporations that are churches. So, it, But the corporation thing means they're headed by a government entity that is not in Christ. Okay? Because we know that the government entities are all headed by other government entities at the top that are ultimately headed by Satan. That's why Satan came to Jesus and says, bow down to me, I'll give you all these kingdoms. you got to keep that in mind. So I'm just identifying this here. And, you know, the angel told John, that woman you saw is a great city. So we don't have to think it's the Catholic Church because it's not the Catholic Church only. The Catholic Church is part of it because it's a corporation controlled by the government. And it has, it says the, the, that she rode the beast. If it's riding, it's controlling it. But there's going to come a time where... Over here, verse 17. The ten horns you saw will hate the whore. Make her desolate and naked. Eat her flesh and burn with fire. For God's put it in hearts to destroy, the, to um, fulfill his will. To create and give their kingdom and the beast. So the words of God are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city, which reigns over the kings of the earth. So we have that. All those elements point to this. My point is the bottom line. What do we do about it? 18.4. It's straight up. Why, why, you know, we can learn about it, but what, more important is what we do about it. You, if you're a member of a church that is a corporation, and sign that thing to be have their head be the government and creator and all that. If you are a member of it, that means you're putting them as your head because you're a member of a body that has a head. And that church's head is the secular government beast. So you've put yourself under that leadership. It funnels down. So you come out of that. So it says, come out of her, my people. 
The only head you need is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit with you. Where two or more are gathered, the Holy Spirit's one and you're one. That's all you need is the Holy Spirit. But his spirit will not strive with man always. So don't think you're going to be able to have the Holy Spirit if you don't obey. He says, come out of her, my people. And he gives reasons so you don't receive of her plagues, right? Her plagues shall come in one hour, death and mourning and famine. This is the last part I want to touch on. Where is it? Oh, here it is right here. Verse 16. Okay. Uh, These shall hate the whore, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. So, desolate and naked. Well, desolate means if, if something's empty, the Holy Spirit's not there. The Holy Spirit won't be there. Um, I ran into a, some pastor. I ran into some people on the, on the street that I prayed for, or that I commanded healing in Jesus' name. They said their pastors and their prayer groups were praying for them, but they still had their ailments. Okay, And so the Holy Spirit ain't there because when a pastor or someone prays that has a Holy Spirit, they get healed. It's The healings happen. I've seen the healings happening lately. And, and um, desolate and naked, naked is, remember, by, you know, the clothes are the righteous acts of saints. That's also in Revelation. So if you're naked, you don't have the works of the Spirit going through you. Um Jesus said, he says, um, if you believe, he that believes on me will cast out devils and speak with new tongues and drink something. If you drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt you. Take up serpents, which means, uh, that means upset devils, okay? Or actually malicious seducers, people, okay? Upset and, um, and shall cast out devils, right? So that, that's what we'd be doing, right? And so if the churches aren't doing, if the corporation churches aren't doing that, or they're faking it, because, you know, there's a lot of deceiving spirits that come in and fake it. And because if they don't have the real thing, they got to fake it or they're going to look fake. Right? <laughs> so also there's grace, though. God can give gifts, but he gives a space to repent. So some congregations might have that space to repent and still be in it before he takes the gifts away or replaces it or lets the devil replace it with a fraud, you know. Because it does say, and I'll just go there real quick here. Second Thessalonians 2, Apostle Paul warns, this is directly linked to it, by the way. Um, for, let's see, chapter 2. It says, sorry, let's see here. Okay, the falling away comes first, before Jesus comes back. The man of sin is revealed, son of perdition. Okay, poses poses and exalts himself above all that is called God or that's worshipped, so that he has God, here we go, so that he has God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is deity, or God. Remember you not that when I was with you, yet with you I told you these things, and now you know what's withholding, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now restrains will restrain until he is taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked one be revealed, whom the controller will consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9, even him whose coming is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. See, there you go. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Um, You all should every morning pray for the love of the truth to fill you. So that not only you'll be saved, but you can save others too. And this, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. They all might be damned who did not believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay, so this is the key up here, though. The wicked one revealed, um, even him whose coming is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. So there's lying wonders, okay? They're not true. They're false. That's what I'm getting at. And it's the man of sin in the church. This man of sin saying he's God, but he's not. Or saying he's of God, but he's not. Because the when they turn corporation and they lose the Holy Spirit, they got to replace it with another spirit. And Satan's right there to fill up their, their deal with, where is it? Right here. Say, uh, working of Satan with all power and signs of lying wonders. So they'll be the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders in the churches. 
just like you know we studied in Revelation and Daniel. So it's ugly, but I tell you what, we have the Holy Spirit, we have Jesus, and the more we obey Him, the more He's with us. He'll come with us stronger. He'll give us the power and the comfort, confidence, the peace, the boldness. His Spirit, His animating force, His life force in us to deal with it and to to comfortably deal with it and overcome and not be overcome, okay? Because he said he will preserve a righteous remnant. That's in the Old Testament. So, you know, that's it. I just want to make you aware of this. If you have any fear, pray. And I pray right now in Jesus' name, you who are listening, that I cast out the spirit of fear and Holy Spirit, that you give them the power, love, and sound mind, confidence, and love, and boldness the love of the truth, that they, that we will be saved. And we work out our salvation with some fear and trembling, but we will overcome, and we have the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, meekness, to sustain us and make us comforted by your Holy Spirit. So, Father, I pray that on every brother and sister listening right now, and those who are on the fence, that you give them the power to come on your side of the fence and keep them by the power of your Holy Spirit. Because stronger is he that is in us than he that is in the world, right? Because <laughs> he's a, he that is in the world, his day is numbered, and it's not going to last. So we just keep that in mind and trust Jesus. And he'll give us the power to go through whatever. He will glorify him, and he'll bless us with it. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. And thank you for your Holy Spirit with us. And be blessed in Jesus' name. Enduring to the end, because the same shall be saved. We endure to the end. It's, we're going to be saved till the end the same way. If we endure, we'll be sa- and we'll be saved the same. And we'll endure to the end. The same shall be saved. That person shall be saved. And that's it. <laughs> so, and it's a special salvation. First Timothy four ten. God is the savior of all mankind, especially of them that believe. So it's good to be saved in this special way where we believe now that we can have the victory in this life over the enemy instead of be run down and overwhelmed by the fraud and deception that's out there to operate in his gifting and his spirits and his victory that we are able to um, impress upon the world where we are with the time we have and where we are. So I love you, brothers and sisters. Be blessed. And take care and trust in Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And also repent of being in the whore now because I believe things are uh, historically about ready to go. And and they're going to make the whore a lot more inviting. Uh, They already did. They already eased up the regulations on the corporate churches. So they're making people comfortable to stay in it. So get out. Don't fall for it. And be blessed in Jesus Christ. Till the... Till the end. Take care.